How should I follow up with startup investors? You've just had a great meeting with an investor. You're all fired up. Then a week goes by and you still haven't heard back from the investor. Now you don't know what you should do next. In today's video, I'll explain the two questions you should ask investors at the end of your pitch meeting to prevent radio silence. Then I'll share with you the wrong way to follow up with startup investors. Finally, I'll share with you the right way and my favorite way to follow up with startup investors. I hope you like it. Hi, I'm Brett. On my channel, I help early stage startup CEOs like you raise money and grow your startup. So if this sounds like you, then hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I release a new video. Let's get started. So, you've just finished pitching investors. The meeting went well. Should you just leave the meeting? No! <laughs> because the follow-up process begins at the end of the investor meeting. And it starts with you asking two questions. The first question is, what concerns do you have about investing in our company? This is a great question to ask because you're giving the investor permission to tell you the problems they see with your company. Most of the time, they will tell you exactly what these problems are. Now, you have the ability to answer their questions right then and there when you're in front of them. This will help you move towards an investment. If by some chance the investors say, I don't have any concerns, then your answer should be, great, when should I expect a term sheet? And maybe they'll actually indeed tell you when you'll get a term sheet. More likely, they'll tell you the concerns they have about investing in your startup. Either way, you've moved closer to an investment. The second question you ask at the end of the meeting should be this. What are the next steps? This is another great question because you'll learn what their investment process is. And if you're gutsy, you can ask when they expect the next step to be completed. You will not offend them. Now here's a tip. Make it a no related question like this. Would you mind telling me when the next step will be completed? Then say it with a smile on your face. Now let's move on to the wrong way to follow up with startup investors. Now again, the meeting is over and a few days go by and you've heard nothing. A week goes by and you've still heard nothing. Now it's time to follow up. First, it's important to remember that most of the time, the delay in hearing from an investor has nothing to do with you. I know it's frustrating not to hear, but you need to keep your cool. I'm not condoning the unnecessary delays that investors inject into the system. I am saying you need to remember the goal is raising money. And it's important to understand why you haven't heard from an investor because this will help you deal with the delays. First, investors are incredibly busy. They have a lot going on. And you're not making them money yet. So delays happen. Second, most of the time, if an investor wants to get in touch with you, they will get in touch with you. However, as I said, sometimes the reason you haven't heard from an investor has nothing to do with you. For example, the lead investor for our Series B funding went completely dark over two weeks after giving us a term sheet. We didn't know what had happened. I kept following up. Eventually, the investor called me and apologized for the radio silence. It turned out his son had a life-threatening illness. That's why you follow up. You never know what's going on with someone. Let me give you two things you should never do in following up with investors. The first one is harassing investors. For example, if you follow up with an investor every day 
after meeting with the investor, I can just about guarantee you will lose your chances of an investor investing in your startup. The second way is by being demanding. It would go something like this. It's been a week since we met and I need to know if you're going forward. Now that we've learned the wrong way to follow up, let's learn the right way to follow up with investors. First, if you get an indication of what to expect after the meeting, then use that to your advantage. So, if an investor tells you it will be a week before you hear from them, be patient and wait a week to follow up. I would follow up eight days later, or seven days later, really doesn't matter. Then, if you don't hear from them, wait another week to follow up. Then I might follow up two weeks later. You get the idea. Second, manage your follow-ups using some sort of simple CRM tool. The reason you want to do this is you'll need to keep everything straight because you'll have multiple investors you're dealing with. The tool could be a simple spreadsheet. Or you can use a tool like Pipedrive.com. Now, for my favorite way of actually following up. I call it the non-follow-up follow-up. In other words, don't just ask them when you will hear from them. Instead, inject some FOMO, fear of missing out, into the process by sharing some good news, showing progress your company is making. Maybe you just want a big new customer order. Then share that with the investors. Or maybe you just hired a great executive. Then share that with the investors. Just keep dribbling out the information showing the investor will miss out. You get the idea. Now, if this content is resonating with you, then please hit the like button right now. One final thought. You need to learn how to deal with the discomfort of radio silence. The old saying, hurry up and wait, is part of the fundraising process. My way of dealing with radio silence was first by reminding myself that the reason I wasn't hearing back usually had nothing to do with us. And that was somewhat effective. <laughs> the more effective thing I did was keep moving. In other words, don't assume that any one investor will give you a term sheet. Keep meeting with new investors. Keep making your company better and better. The more you do, the more likely it is that you will raise your funding. Now, what did you learn from today's video? Put your answer in the comments column below today's video. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments column too, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Now, I have one more thing for you today. It's my free startup pitch deck template. It has all the slides you need to develop an awesome pitch deck. Click the link below today's video and it's yours for free. If you haven't already, then please join my free group of startup CEOs Zero to Pitch. It is a community for startup CEOs focusing on growing their early stage startups and startup CEOs raising money for their early stage startups. Click the link below this video to join. Finally, click the subscribe button to get notified every time I release a new video. I'm Brett at brettjfox.com. Thanks for watching today. Take care. Bye.